You know who we haven't smacked around lately? Idiot Fundy Christians. Let's see what they're up to. When people talk about the problem of evil, they think it's just a problem for Christians. No, evil is a problem for every worldview. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. It just turns out that Christianity is the only worldview that can actually answer the question. Yeah, no. It pretty much is just a problem for Christianity because it's Christianity that posits an omniscient, omnipotent, and omnibenevolent being as well as objective evil. The problem exists when all of those things are present, resulting in a fundamental contradiction. Maybe there are a few other religions out there that it's a problem for, but mostly it isn't. The Greeks never claimed that Zeus was omnibenevolent, for example. The guy was a real plonk a lot of the time. So the problem of evil doesn't exist for Zeus worshippers. It doesn't exist for Buddhists either, who posit that suffering, or dukkha, means you haven't yet achieved enlightenment, and they go into what they believe are the root causes of suffering and how to transcend them. So the problem of evil doesn't exist for Buddhists. And it doesn't exist for atheists either, since there's no god to stop evil from existing to begin with. No. It's only a problem for any belief system which posits a being that is all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful. Because if God is all of these things, whence cometh evil? It's a fundamental contradiction in the belief system that needs to be addressed. So why do I have a feeling that this is going to be yet another case of Christians trying to talk their way around the problem of evil instead of actually dealing with it? How can you have hope when people are dying, when there's evil all around us? How can a good God exist if he allows these bad things to happen? Why hasn't he answered our prayers to stop the coronavirus and a million other diseases? Yeah, none of those things are the point. I mean, if you believe that this all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-loving being just suddenly popped into existence 12 seconds ago, and looked around and went, holy crap, there's evil everywhere. You would expect him to do something about it. Then this would be a valid question about why does he allow it. But in your worldview, God created the universe. The whole shooting match is his doing. Being all-knowing, he knew that evil would come along in the universe that he was about to create, and he would know how to create the universe so that wouldn't happen. Being all-powerful, he would have been able to make the universe that way, to avoid evil. And being all-loving, he would have wanted to create the universe that way. And yet, he created it this way, knowing full well, in advance, from the very start, that evil would result, and being completely within his power to prevent. So it's not that he allows evil, it's not that he doesn't do anything about evil, it's about him being the reason evil exists to begin with. And my contention is all of those questions should actually give you hope because there are assumptions behind all those questions that can only be fulfilled if God exists. See, pain, suffering, and disease should actually give us hope because evil actually shows that God exists. How does that even remotely follow? The whole idea of the problem of evil is that the existence of evil shows that there cannot be a God that's all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful. It doesn't rule out any God. It's no problem for Huitzilopochtli, who was so much of a jerkwad he demanded people cut out each other's hearts while they were still alive, but it is a problem for your God. And evil, by the way, is the primary reason that God, the Father, sent Jesus into this world. Yeah, it's also the reason he did that whole global flood thing, according to your mythos. That didn't seem to do the trick, so he had to do the whole sacrifice himself to himself thing, which wasn't really a sacrifice because he undid it three days later. But after 2,000 years, there's still evil, so that didn't work either. His final solution, I guess, is going to be sometime in the unspecified future and involves the lake of fire for some reason. Man, for an all-powerful being, God kinda sucks at ending evil, doesn't he? But why does he have to go through all of this? If you want to say, well, God can't take on the devil right now because he has to marshal his forces, or the universe has to develop to a certain level first, or whatever, fine, but you're solving the problem by giving up the idea that God is all-powerful. 
Because if God is all-powerful, he could end evil with just a thought. He wouldn't have to use a flood. He wouldn't have to use a lake of fire. He wouldn't have to get anyone nailed to anything. Just think it gone and it's gone. So why doesn't he? But again, this is really beside the point. The question isn't, why doesn't God do something about evil? It's about, why did he create a universe where evil would inevitably result to begin with? If there was no evil, there would be no need for redemption. Isn't this a bit like saying, if there weren't this disease, there'd be no need for a cure? Well, that's exactly the point. It'd be great if the disease didn't exist in the first place, so we wouldn't have to worry about this whole cure nonsense. If this was heaven already, there would be no reason to come and save us, because we wouldn't need saving. Exactly! The whole thing is just one massive waste of your time. Uh... How do you think this is supporting your side? But since this is in heaven, since we know there's pain, suffering, disease, and death, there's a need for redemption. But why? According to you, not just Christianity, but your particular denomination, God could see how every single event would play out the moment he created the universe. And since he's all-powerful, he could have changed it if he wanted, made whatever tweaks necessary to make it play out however he wanted it to. So again, why did God set up the universe knowing it would result in evil? Why not make whatever tweaks were necessary at the very beginning to stop it in its tracks? But you know what? Let's leave your human arrogance aside for the moment. What about the suffering of animals? And I mean wild animals in places far away from human interaction. They suffer disease. They're eaten by predators. They fight each other for scarce resources. They die because it's too hot, or too cold, or there's not enough rain. Why did God do that? What did animals do? When people talk about the problem of evil, they think it's just a problem for Christians. No, evil is a problem for every worldview. No, it's only a problem for worldviews that have objective evil and an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving being. But that's all a distraction anyway. Regardless of what other worldviews this may or may not be a problem for, we're talking about your worldview right now. You're the one claiming Christianity has an answer for it. So you can't answer it by saying, it's a problem for these guys too. That is not an answer. This is a problem that's internal to your belief system. It's an internal contradiction. You need to answer for this. It just turns out that Christianity is the only worldview that can actually answer the question. This is just nonsense. It isn't a question to be answered. It's an internal inconsistency. It shows that your worldview is self-contradictory. When you think about what Christianity is about, Christianity really is the answer to the problem of evil. It's the answer to why things are. After we rebelled against God... Why did we rebel against God? Why did God set things up so that humans would rebel against him? If he's all-knowing and all-powerful, he would have seen it coming, and so he would have been able to set things up so that didn't happen. And if he were all-loving, he would have wanted to. That is the contradiction. And if you think about it, that means that God set up the universe so that it was inevitable that humans would rebel against him, meaning he didn't even give us the choice. At any rate, we're not talking about rebelling against God. We're talking about why evil exists. Why is there disease? Why are there hurricanes and earthquakes? Why do species undergo extinction events? Why is there poverty, misery, and hunger? None of these things have to do with rebelling against God. So are you going to deal with them? And I'll go back to wild animals again. What did they do to rebel against God? Why should they have to live in misery? God set up a plan to enter the bloodstream of humanity so that he could come into this world and take evil upon himself and take our punishment on himself. That's what the whole story is about. Again, if God wanted to do that, he could have just done it with a thought. Why would he have to go through all that rigmarole? Unless you're going to tell us that he really isn't all-powerful after all. I mean, that would solve the problem, so how about it?
In fact, if you could sum up the Bible in one sentence or one word, I should say, the theme of the Bible, the theme of the Bible is the word redemption. You have paradise lost in Genesis. Why was it lost? Why did God set up a universe where it could be lost? Indeed, inevitably would be lost. Paradise regained in Revelation. So what's he waiting for? Why did he set up any of this to happen? Everything in between is the story of redemption. So it's all just about telling a story? We're all just puppets on strings playing out his little drama? He could save us all from the evil right now. He wouldn't be all powerful if he couldn't. But he allows all this suffering to go on, even the suffering of animals, just to tell a story? So much for him being all loving. Which also would solve the problem. Evil exists because God is an amoral dick who cares more about telling his story than he does about the suffering of those the story is about. Where God literally enters the bloodstream of humanity, adds flesh to his deity, and takes our punishment on himself. Well, it seems to me our punishment is thousands of years of evil, which he apparently wants to happen because he's trying to sell a pilot to Netflix or something. So how is he in any way taking it on himself? Why would he even need to take it on himself? Again, the problem is, why does evil even exist in the first place if God is all-loving, all-knowing, and all-powerful? You haven't answered the question! That's what the whole thing is about. No, the whole thing is about an internal contradiction in your belief system and how you're twisting yourself up in knots to avoid it. Hey, thanks for watching! Please hit like and subscribe and keep these videos coming by donating, becoming a subscriber and getting special benefits, or even for free with airtime. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you!